Imagine we're chatting at a coffee shop about how modern secular outlooks are influenced by ancient philosophies like Epicureanism, Stoicism and Gnosticism. It's fascinating to see how these influences work together, almost like the three-body problem you find in physics. This is an unsolvable analytical problem which many have recently encountered in the thought-provoking books by Liu Cixin. If we acknowledge the equal forces of all human philosophies acting on us, we realize that it is like a many-body problem all pulling on us at all times, creating a chaotic interplay of these three very popular outlooks that impacts human agency and meaning. Hidden in the books by Liu Cixin and the Netflix miniseries, the true interplay of competing human ideologies is portrayed as an inherently stable and solvable experience, while, in fact, it will never be stable. If there is no actual stabilizing reality to expose this instability, we can consider the reality of our human experience by analyzing three very modern and popular outlooks. Epicureanism, Stoicism, and Gnosticism. The first influence is Epicureanism. It is the philosophy that systematically focuses on seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. Without us even knowing the ancient reality of this philosophy, it certainly contributes to a materialistic view of life. It's all about finding happiness in the here and now, often leading to a consumerist mindset. People end up chasing fleeting pleasures, thinking that more stuff or experiences will give their lives meaning. The second influence is Stoicism, emphasizing reason and detached acceptance in the face of overwhelming challenges. Stoicism adds another very popular layer to modern secularism. While it encourages resilience and rationality, it can sometimes lead to a utilitarian application of the current materialistic status quo, where everything is reduced to mechanistic analysis of matter in motion. In our modern context, this might translate into a kind of emotional detachment a type of forced indifference where people go through the rational motions without really engaging deeply with life or questioning the bigger picture. The third influence is Gnosticism and it brings in the element of seeking personal enlightenment and knowledge by rejecting reality and seeking to escape from an evil world. This sounds great and even heroic but deep within this framework remains the inability to save yourself. It can lead to a fragmented and even destructive understanding of reality. People might jump from one self-help fad to another, always looking for the next big thing to give their lives meaning, but never really finding it. When these three modern incarnations of ancient influences combine, it's like a complex unpredictable dance. Instead of empowering individuals, it results in a chaotic degradation of human agency. People might end up as zombified hedonists, constantly consuming in an attempt to fill the void, but never really achieving the sense of purpose or fulfillment they're looking for. This chaotic mix can lead to regression and even attempts to destroy the existing ordering realities in place, where instead of finding true meaning and agency, people are trapped in a cycle of shallow, short-term gratifications and unwarranted certainties. Recently, the popular media told us about a well-known personality, Ayan Hirsi Ali's very personal journey from Islam to atheism and eventually encountering the immense personal reality of Christianity. This deeply personal experience 
reflects the chaotic interplay of these ancient philosophies, Epicureanism, Stoicism and Gnosticism in modern secularism. It described how atheism, despite its promise of reason and liberation, left her with a void, a nihilistic vacuum where materialism and secular ideologies failed to provide true meaning and purpose in life. This void, she argued, often leads to chaotic attempts at finding meaning through hedonistic pleasures and shallow engagements. Hirsi Ali found that Christianity, through a personal relationship with God's love, redemption and renewal, offers a coherent and fulfilling connection with an ever-sanctifying reality. She emphasized that redemption through Christ provides a unifying relationship that can order our cravings and bring harmony, much like how the sun at the center of our solar system orders our solar system. By turning to Christianity, she discovered a powerful truth that addresses the human condition and provides hope and meaning, countering the fragmented and chaotic existence promoted by modern atheistic beliefs. Somehow it is clear that this archetypical journey towards communion with God and his creation contains the potential for a structured Christ-centered worldview to resolve the modern secular three-body problem of competing philosophies and cravings, offering a stable and meaningful foundation for a civilized community and ecology of life in communion with God.